Okay, at first glance, you know, it's all here. There's a little bit of a fold here for some reason. We're going to try to straighten that out. Our, uh, these little rollers are stiff, and they should roll really freely. So the grease has gotten bad in those. Pinch wheel feels soft enough and uh, feels like it's connected to the flywheels connected back there. Uh, these can be polished up, but not bad. Uh, you know, everything seems to be in order. So, uh, let's open it up and see what we got inside. The first one of these I've ever had, so I'm kind of excited to see what lurks underneath. Start by cracking these babies. Ooh, they're already loose. Ooh, that's a bad sign. Extremely loose. Somebody might have been in here. That one's a little tighter. I'm a huge fan of Hawk stuff. I didn't even know it existed until a couple of years ago. And I got a Hawk Reverb to begin with. And was just extremely impressed with the way it sounded. And then uh, went in a little deeper and started to see some uh, tape echoes and other machines for sale. But everything I've had by Hawk has been uh, of just wonderful build quality. All right, there's uh, some Got a pair down here. You know, some of this stuff, the feet uh, are also, they go right through into the cabinet. So sometimes you got to pull feet on these things. Okay, we might be getting close to going in. now oh it comes out in one piece I thought maybe we were two separate parts okay this is a big moment oh come on baby we'll just gently push on the back here okay Gently, Indy. Gently. I think I'm going to move this uh, old Liberty guitar here. Uh, it's just going to be getting in the way, I'm afraid. So let's get that out of the way. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Oh, God, it's the worst commercial, isn't it? Somebody should be uh, fired for that. And excommunicated. Oh. All right, baby. Well, we just pulled the cord through this hole, it looks like. Let's put a knot in it. Let's get that out. Okay, let's put that case down. Oh, there it is. Okay, wow. I just love these things. Well, let's flip it around and look at the back. First time view. Not as complicated as I thought. Nothing, no obvious issues. Starting to realize that uh, these might be more of a design aesthetic than anything. It's a simple pulley system in the middle. Uh, flywheel and then you know ho however these things are so smooth and this is without any grease or oil so it probably keeps that tape path uh, nice and smooth uh, a little bit another before look we've got a lot of corrosion on these heads so those definitely need to be cleaned I'll pull this stuff off and hit that chrome uh, I'm a little torn about these I have to see what they look like but I'd like them to be polished but you know I don't want to do anything uh, more than is necessary really Well, let's start by cleaning the hitting those pots So I'm almost out of contact cleaner. I guess I'm gonna have to order some of that up, but let's get these These sprayed and worked a little bit Just 
unplugged that and uh, just hit it with a little contact cleaner. I'll do the same over here. Okay, I think I'm going to start by just uh, cleaning up the circuit board a little bit and uh, wiping it down with some Q-tips and getting some of that dust out of there. So uh, let's start there. Just went and got uh, a couple of Q-tips. I thought I had more. What? I think I dropped a couple Q-tips. But anyway, we got a couple of Q-tips and uh, just a toothbrush here with some water in a bowl. Oh, Lucky Charms disposable that I brought back. My mom sent me actually from the States. Uh, I used to love Lucky Charms as a kid, which she remembers obviously, but uh, not quite as big on them anymore, but I appreciate the present. Now that I'm 50, not so much into the charms, but they are magically delicious. There's no getting around it. Okay, this is completely unnecessary in the overall scheme of things, but we want to get, I do, want to get the dust out of here just because uh, I want it to be clean. If it was, you know, major amounts of dust, it's a great idea for temperature wise. And this is more aesthetics, which um, no one sees this, but we I know what it looks like and uh, I want it to be clean. And uh, one time I got a 65 volts, so I still have it, 65 Beetle. And it was a Friday night, and uh, this I, you know, this is how I remember it. Who knows what really happened here? <laughs> it's been a long time, but my buddy Timmy came over to the garage, and he's like, uh, I had the rear wheel off, and uh, I was painting the inner fenders and detailing my shock mounts and painting my drums, and he's like, "What are you doing?" And I said, "I'm detailing this inner fender." And uh, he's like, well, there's a party at so-and-so's. Let's go. We're all heading out there. I said, well, I think I'm just going to hang out and finish this up. No one will ever see it. And uh, But I, sa I said, you know, I know what it looks like. And uh, I felt all high and mighty, you know, because uh, I was so concerned about that inner fender. And maybe I should have went to the party. I don't know. But I still got the car. Still love the car. It's in a garage in the States. And I don't know if that party was that great. I guess I'll never know. Maybe it was. Maybe it was the best party ever. It'd have to have been a pretty good one to top some of the other parties that were. We had some good parties. And here's to all tomorrow's parties. All tomorrow's parties. Okay, I, I think I'm I'm so anxious to hear it that I'm not gonna just go crazy on this circuit board, to be honest. And it isn't bad, it looks pretty good. Hero say inspected this thing uh, and gave it the seal of approval there, which is good. Here I'll say. Let's see how how well it was inspected. This definitely can use a wipe down. Mm -hmm. oh. It's moving pretty well. I'm gonna hit that with just a dab of uh, oil. Uh, just for now, I'm just gonna hit it with a little. Uh, WD-40 equivalent uh, just to see if we get a little more movement on that over time. It's not going to change it immediately. Okay, everything looks good like I said. So let's uh, hit these switches. You can't really hit them from the back so I think I'll just try to sneak in the front here and uh, give these a little blaster. Bring a little from the top and let all the big G gravity work its way down there. Give that tape speed slider a little 
a little shot of grease. That's contact cleaner, by the way. Okay, well, uh, let's get a little screwdriver and pop these off. And uh, I think what we're going to find is all kinds of uh, black grease that has solidified in there over the years. And we'll clean those off and get those spinning freely. See if this is a good size for that. Looks like it. This is the easiest way I've found to pull these off. Just get in there with a little screwdriver, work them side to side. And we just lost a little washer. But that's kind of what I expected. I mean, it's uh, the grease has become tar, essentially. So uh, let's clean these up and get them put back on. That's what's coming off if you're curious. And let's hit the back side of this as well. And I think I'm going to use a little oil or you know this WD 40 type stuff on here. Let's see if we can get some of that off that washer. These things can be extremely important, so we never want to bend them or <clears throat> uh, cause any other damage to them. And that cleaned it up pretty well, so I'm just going to put that right back on. Eventually, I'm going to grease this. Uh, but for now, I'm, again, I'm just going to hit this with a little bit of oil. And we're sounding great. Uh, typically, and I, I guess I'll do it now, it just makes sense. I'm going to put a little silicone spray in there too. Uh, especially with plastic, I like to have a little silicone in there. Just seems like uh, it does a better job than petroleum based. You can see how smooth that is now. So let's get a little clip back on there. And going back is never as easy as coming off with these. But let's grab a little needle nose and see if we can do this very gently. All right. You know, that's our difference. So, let's get that second one off. You know, if you got one of these and you're, something's not working on it, I had no idea, and I still really don't know what I'm doing, but I had absolutely no idea what I was doing when I first started playing with these things. But there's so much happening on the internet now, and I'm trying to be a little bit of to you know, pay back a little bit of what I got because I uh, learned so much from other people in so many areas. You know, I'm a car fanatic, motorcycle guy, and it seems like whatever thing that might crop up in today's world, uh, you can go online and find somebody who's put together some tutorial uh, explaining what they did or you know what they think is the best way to do something. So. There's plenty of ways to, uh, places you can learn about these things, and, uh, but don't be afraid. Just get in there and at least take a look and see if you see something burnt or some belt missing or uh, something. And uh, who knows, maybe you can end up fixing it yourself. Uh, I've always been a lot more satisfied. Of course, I haven't taken anything I've owned to anyone else to get fixed in... 30 years I'm gonna say uh, other than my body I have uh, I did break an ankle and I wasn't able to fix that myself <laughs> uh, so I had to go to the Japanese hospital for that and they did a nice job on me uh, but you know it just 
seems like uh, if you put a little time in, you can fix, figure out what's wrong and fix it yourself. And the, the satisfaction that comes from that is so uh, beneficial to your overall state of being, I have found. Just makes you feel good inside. All right, a little silicone. Oh, let's get that washer back in there. Like I said, these things are never easy and they're scary, you know, they fly around, but I found just put them straight up and down so they're not going anywhere and then start on the bottom. Just make sure you're not gouging in the plastic anywhere and you should be all set. This one rotates a lot better than this one, but we're going to give it some time and see what happens here. Okay, I think I'm going to turn it on actually. I want to clean that pinch wheel and it's the easiest way to do it is when it's rotating. So let's plug this in. And this is our maiden voyage here. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got juice. We got spinning wheels. Spinning wheels got to go round. No smoke. We're looking good. We're just going to let that roll for a second. I'm going to grab my pinch wheel cleaner. Japan is such a forward thinking country in so many areas. and uh, But kitchens and heating systems are not two of their strong points. I'm using a kerosene heater in the corner of this room unbelievable isn't it no central heating no insulation in this place so this is just some uh, pinch wheel cleaner and for this I just put it on a paper towel and I think we'll freshen it up a little bit turn it over We'll hit that again, I think, too, but for now, that feels good. You know, if there's any kind of a divot, of course, there's nothing resting on this directly, which is a good aspect of this design. But uh, if a pinch wheel gets a divot, it can cause a real problem. So I think we're going to pull this shield off and take a look at that whole head mechanism there. And it'll allow us a little more access to clean it. Oof, careful. I don't want to blame it on the heat, but I'm just hot right now. Oh, God, don't do it. Oh, there's a dust in there. Put those over there. We'll give this a little wipe down. She's a five head feedback system. We used to call my friend Greg five head because his he had a lot more than a four head. So he got the nickname five head, which in retrospect was a terrible nickname. To give our buddy. There were worse nicknames. This fold, you know, the original, originally there was a plexiglass cover that was kind of uh, this shaped that went in here. So I think what happened is that cover caught this piece of uh, black vinyl and pushed it over over time. It just got kind of permanently laid in there. Uh, I will, this didn't come with a cover, unfortunately. So I've got a piece of black plexi that I'll, I'll cut 
that'll at least look like a cover and keep some of the dust out. That's not original. It won't be original. Okay. Well, there are some people that are going to disagree with this next move, I'm sure. But what I'm going to do is take just a little tiny bit of steel wool here. Um, it's a Brillo pad that I've cut into uh, quarters. And uh, I'm just going to work the outer portion of these heads with by you know avoiding the tape surface where the where the tape rides but i'd like to clean these up a little bit and i don't think this is hurting anything okay certainly looks better uh let me see what's going on back here these just thread in no nuts, so I'm going to take these right off to clean them. And it's three pieces, yeah. Interesting little things. I thought they'd be milled when I first saw one of these machines, but, you know, one piece kind of milled down, but it's just three little separate pieces and a long screw. So it makes up that tape guide. You know, this situation isn't that important, but whenever there's two of something uh, in a car or anywhere else or two or more of something, I always try to leave one together while I'm doing uh, whatever it is I'm doing. So that worst case scenario, you can go back and look at the, the one that's still intact and uh, see how it's supposed to be. So. Uh, you know, if once you know how something works in detail, then I think it's you're good to go. Just pull all four of these pieces off and wash them all at once over in the sink. But again, uh, we're gonna do this one one at a time. But that's uh, a technique I like to use if I don't know really what's going on. Leave something intact. Looks like I'm not really on camera for half of this. Stuff I'm doing here. I'll try to move over a little bit. You know, Brillo Pad has some kind of polish built into it, and I like the the protective nature of it once it's uh, been used. It seems like it wards off rust and corrosion for. Uh, uh, you know, better than if it hadn't been brilloed, anyway. My God, it's still so hot in this room. Okay, let's put that back on. Isn't that a nice improvement? Okay, I'm going to pause the camera and uh, do these four. These two have felt on them, so I'll clean those up, and uh, we'll be back. Okay, I just pulled the upper right one, and interestingly, these are one piece, and they're kind of a cam uh, in that the it's not drilled in the center, so depending on where you uh, line this up, it'll be you know closer or further from... Uh, these wheels that'll provide a little bit more tension. So that's a unique uh, design here. See that. Okay, I've got this one clean and ready to be put back on. And you can see I just threaded it on there. And uh, these, this is obviously the outline of where it sat all those years. So depending on where you put this thing, you're going to have a different location. So let's just put it back to where it was roughly for now. And if we need to, we'll make an adjustment at some point. But I think that's a good place to start. Let's get this piece back in. 
They look so much better clean, don't they? Oh, beautiful. So, get this bad boy on. All right. Ooh. And right about there seems to be where it was. Interesting design idea. Just drill your hole in a different spot. Uh, certainly cheaper than creating some uh, in a wild adjustable mechanism. So uh, it's a cheap way of doing it, but a good one. A little cantilever design. That's exactly right. Going with it. I like saying that cantilevered once in a while. Hey, look at there. Four shiny pieces of chrome. Isn't that nice? Oh, well, let's keep moving. Okay, I'm going after one of these wheels and I'm going to see uh, what I can do with that. So, let's pop this circlip out. Interesting. We can't clear that uh, little tab. And those are spot welded onto the gray face. Uh, this side, we can easily clear it. This side, no. So I wonder if it's just because that's bent. Oh, I'm glad we thought about it. So I'm just going to start bending on this a little bit. Okay, this one has some give that's why this one's available all right here's my conundrum and that is uh there's a little bit of a machine milling mark in here uh that you can see it's going to be tough on the camera but i don't really want to remove that but i'd like these to be as shiny as possible so what i'm going to do is start on the back and just try a few different methods of polishing and cleaning and uh whichever one seems to work the best i'll bring that over to the front so I'm going to go try those out and I'll report back as to which one seemed to be the best. Okay, uh, we're, I think, done as far as I'm going to go here. I think with a buffing wheel, we would, you know, could get those things ridiculously shiny. And I'm actually kind of wishing I would have just left the patina. Uh, but now I've got to do this one to match that one, obviously. It looks better clean, I think, but there's part of me, you know, it's only original once, is the old saying. Uh, but I do like the fact that there's a little more sheen there, and there was a fair amount of, uh, you know, there's roughness and things on the tape path, so that definitely needed to be cleaned up. Uh, but anyway, we'll put this back together. I'm going to do the same to this one. That little jingle you just heard wasn't the ice cream man, but uh, it's a kerosene... Uh, oil truck that drives around and fills up your cans so you can uh, heat your house in 2021. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? But they drive around, fill up 18-liter blue jugs, and then people carry them in their house and fill up kerosene heaters and stay warm. <laughs> it just never ceases to shock me. Okay, certainly an unscientific test, but a pretty good spin, a pretty good spin. We're smoother. Okay, we're looking pretty good. And the method I went with uh, after minimal experimentation was 1500 grit uh, wet sand paper and just wet sanded them briefly to get the heavy corrosion off and then uh, a little aluminum polish on a rag. And again, if I took them to a buffing wheel, I think we could really get some shine out of there. Okay, I'm going to work on just cleaning these heads up, and uh, I'm not going to bore you with all that, but I'm going to get in there and uh, polish the chrome all the way around these heads, and then uh, a little head cleaner on these tape heads. Okay, good people, we're back, and I've uh, finished cleaning up these heads with just, oops, I'll put the cap on this, 
uh, a little bit of this Pico metal polish. And Pika Pika is uh, shiny, shiny in Japanese, basically. Pika Pika is shiny, uh, but you give it two Pikas. I like this old can. It's got the metal top. They still sell it in this can, but uh, they went to plastic tops. And you know it won't be long until they go to uh, plastic cans. I think they may have already done that now that I think about it. Uh, but the first step was going to a blue plastic top. But what a cool old can, isn't it? That's a beauty. I bought this 16 years ago when I first got to Japan. Uh, so, it served me well. And I keep saying 16, it's 17 now. I used to keep saying 15 when it was 16. You get the idea. I lose track of time is what I'm trying to say here. Alright. Don't make me come out and say it. Okay, uh, what we're doing here is just uh, some simple uh, head cleaning liquid by Audio Technica, which is basically, uh, I think, it's just alcohol that they dye pink, so it seems like you're getting something great. And who knows, maybe they've got some Audio Technica evaporating qualities that are better than just alcohol but my guess is we got pink alcohol but you know what i'm happy with it and it wasn't very expensive and it came with a pinch cleaning you know the pinch cleaning set and the tape head cleaning set came in the same set i guess you would say okay uh next i'm gonna run over and grab my demagnifying uh, demagnetizing unit and uh, give these heads a once over okay let's bust out the TAC E3 uh, she's a dusty old girl sits down on my floor over there uh, but it's in the original box I'm really really happy with this old unit again I've mentioned this in a couple other videos there's a lot of debate whether there is much uh, to be accomplished with demagnetizing things but uh, you know I'm, I think there's certainly no harm in it you know so uh, I hope so let's plug this beast in and we'll demag these heads sounds like electric razor all right and uh, the idea here is that you just kind of work it around uh, those heads a little bit and then it says to pull away from it there's a little plastic tip on there so you're not uh, scuffing anything up when you're doing this not sure what the pull away does Something with electrons. I'm glad there's no more than five heads because after a while that sound starts to really freak you out. Okay, that's it. T Hack uh, Head Demagnetizer E3. She's a beauty. Made in Japan, 2.5 watt. All right, I'll put this away. Okay, I'm just getting ready to put this back in its box, which uh, is where it belongs. It took me a long time to learn to just put things away right when you're done. But uh, let's take a look at this owner's manual. Here's the Japanese on this side. And, whoops, sorry about that. Japanese on this side. And the English on this side. Uh, it's quick and easy head care. Four or five strokes of power, the powerful demagnetizer tip across the front of the head surface assures complete degaussing of the built-up mechanism. Uh, cool operation. You can uh, use it for a long time without heat buildup. It does it with a buzz. A pleasant buzzing sound assures the user that the E3 is working. I'm not sure if it's all that pleasant, but uh, here's the the suggestion when tapes are recorded the magnetic particles on the tape are carefully arranged in a certain pattern which will reproduce the recording during playback if anything disturbs particles on the tape during or after the recording the content of the program will be altered permanently resulting in noise or distortion 
The probable source of disturbance is magnetized heads or tape guides on the deck. Any metal part containing iron or ferro alloys or any other metals can be magnetized by electric currents. Uh, so I wonder if it's suggesting that I demag these uh, magnetic rollers also. As electric current flows through the heads of the tape itself carry magnet magnetism across the guides and the capstan, these parts are liable to be magnetized eventually by gradual buildup or suddenly by strong currents in the heads. There's no such thing as excessive demagnetation. Every 50 hours of use. All right, that's about it. So, uh, you know, I just put it away, but I think I'm going to hit uh, these little things here out of an abundance of caution. Okay, I've done a few things here off camera, but uh, I'm really getting anxious to try this thing. So uh, I'm going to put a tape on here in a minute. But before I do that, I'm just going to just briefly give this a real quick little cursory wipe down here along the front with just a little bit of soapy water. Uh, I don't want to use anything too harsh. The last thing we want is to pull any of this. Uh, screen printing off the front. So let's just give it a real gentle wipe. I clean that knob up with a toothbrush and that sure looks better. Boy, they're just beautiful machines, aren't they? I just love them. All right, and uh, I think before I forget, I'm not going to forget, but as long as they don't serve any purpose to be out, I'm going to put these little Allen heads back in the uh, in the face here because I pulled a member because I thought maybe it was a two-piece unit and we were going to get half the, the lower part out by pulling these. So I'm going to go ahead and put these four back in and then I think I'm going to make a tape for it and give it a try. So let's see what happens. Let's back this up just a little bit. Okay, so I went online and looked at the tape path for this because I've never uh, had one before. So. I see some people are going over these felts and some people are going under them and um, so we'll have to see which is the better method for that. What I'm using here is just an old karaoke tape uh, that uh, I pull loops out of so let me I gotta get a better scissors at some point. We're just gonna get a rough idea to start with of what kind of length we need here. So we'll put this over here and let's see this is going to be some serious trial and error more than likely. Put that where we want it. And then I think what I'm going to do, if, oh God, if I only had a marker, here's one. Oh. I'm going to mark the tape and the tape. See that? I just came up with a good idea. All right, so now uh, I'm going to pull this back off. And wherever I marked on the tape, there's two tapes going on here, mind you. 
uh, wherever I marked on the magnetic tape and wherever I marked on this tape, I'm going to cut those two and join them at the two tape sections. That should make sense, right? Let's see what happens. Okay, so again, I've marked the two spots, and here's what I'm going to try to do. You're going to keep this tape to make sure that it's both heading in the same direction. And then I'm going to put those two about where I think they should be is right about there and kind of line those two up and then I'm going to cut this at a diagonal right there and then uh, I will peel this piece off mm, I wish I you know ideally we would have done this maybe a little differently but let's take a little piece of this tape now this is some old school uh, scotch splicing tape and it's old but it still seems to work uh, one little trick I've learned if you if your tape is not sticky like you'd like it just throw it in the microwave for just a few seconds and it seems to activate the glue and kind of redo the glue okay so we're gonna be going uh, brown side on the heads so let's uh, this is going to be kind of unscientific but I'm just going to put that piece of tape there again we're going to make a better tape eventually for it uh, but let's just see if we can get a test tape going and we make sure we're going the same direction and then we kind of eye these two up and I would do this on the table, but I'm trying to show you what I'm doing here. Uh, so I've got my little angle cuts that should be about the same. And we'll just line them up. I'm going to give them a pinch. Again, normally I do it on the table and I wouldn't be touching the tape quite as much. But uh, now I'm just going to go along the side and uh, trim my excess tape off. All right, I think we're going to call that good. All right, you can see we got a little bit of tape on the outside. It's not good. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it. All right, a little less tape, magnetic tape. You see how I trimmed a little bit. It's better than than having tape exposed because the tape will gum up your heads and so. Okay, let's feed this baby in there and see if we got the right length. I hope we do. So, we're going to go here. Boy, it's starting to look good, isn't it? The shiny, shiny heads. Look at that. Let's start over here. I wonder what the official method of loading this is. I think we're going to start here. We're learning, people. We're learning together. Isn't that wonderful? All right, we're going this way. Around. Come on, you dirty little devil. Okay, come on. Go on over the heads here's the moment of truth see if we're I think we're too long oh, we look about right okay uh, however you know we got to get back over these heads so let's give that a little help get her up on those heads
this seems like there's too much tension on there, doesn't it? What did I say the internet's uh, suggestion was? Uh, most people are going over the top of those. So let's go. You know, it depends on how they've got these things adjusted, but that seems to me to be too much tension. So let's go up there. Back fighting it. Oh, son of a gun, we had it too. Oh. What are you doing now? Oh my god. Over this is over the top. Okay. Now, let's put this back up here. That's still with me? All right. I edited it out uh, probably an awful long time. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay. Hey, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? Like so, uh, let's start by putting a few things away here. And uh, I'm going to grab a mic. Oh, damn. Uh, I'm going to grab a mic. And we're going to put this baby together. Let me put my loop making tape away here. All right, microphone. I'll plug it in. And this is our maiden voyage. Okay, people, we're, I'm ready to rip. And this is the maiden voyage. So let's see what happens here. Uh, we're on mic. We're in line input one. Uh, let's just turn these down for now. Echo tone can stay in the middle. Uh, head selector. Let's just put them all on in the middle. Output echo. Let's put her on echo. Here we go. Check. 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 Or oh, still a little crackly. Check. 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 Oh, we got nothing at this point. Check. 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 Input. Oh, we got. Oh, God. Check. Why well, he repeats too. Check. 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 There's our echo. Normal. Echo. Repeat. Check. Echo depth. Check. Tone. Master. Let's try some head selectors. Check. 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 She's a little noisy. Check. 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 Well, that's no head probably. Check. Check. One. Check, 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 check. All right, it's not great. Let's be honest. Check, 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 check. It was better a second ago. Check. Ooh, I think we just got a bad switch. Let's hit that again. Check. I don't think I sprayed these before, did I? Check. 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 Oh, God. Please, baby, please. Check. 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 One. We're over. We're over driving the hell out of this thing now. Check. 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 One. 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 I'm not 100% sure what's going on. I think this check. You would think this would be normal, no, uh, no echo. We're not erasing 100%. You can hear that. Check. Here's our echo. Check. And here's normal. We're not getting any normal. Uh, check. Check. 
Normal. Normal. All right, I'm starting to figure the machine out. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, this is normal only. And this is echo plus normal. This is echo only. So this is wet only. Check. All right, let's go back to echo plus normal. Normal. It sounds clean. You know, the as a preamp, it's clean as a whistle. Tone, tone, tone. Master control. Oh, oh baby. Check. 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 One. 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 Check. 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 One. 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 Check. 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 One. One. Check. 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 One. One. Check. 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 The speed control is a little wonky, but it'll come back. Check. We got a little whoop, 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 whoop right about there. I think I'm going to give that another little blast of the goodness. Oh, oh, check. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Check. All right, we're a little muffly, but, you know, it's partly due to that tape, probably. It's the worst tape ever. Uh, we can work on this tape path a little bit and see if uh, a little more resistance. Check. Uh, in any particular place. Check. Ooh, not there. Check. Uh, but we might want to adjust these a little bit. Check. To, uh, you know, put a little more pressure here or alleviate a little pressure somewhere. Check, check. All right. Beautiful. Uh, Let's maybe fine tune that back and see. We're not erasing real good. Check. 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 All right. I'm going to poke around a little bit. Okay, people, it's the next evening, and I don't remember exactly where I left off, but um, one thing I just noticed here, I'm back down uh, working on this tonight. I was doing a few other things today. And uh, everything's working great, but it, if you notice, we've got a really, the belt's just hanging on by very last little tiny bits of goom. So uh, we're going to have to find a new belt for it. And uh, I dug out my belt selection here. And let's see if we got one that's uh, roughly the same size. We want to hopefully find something that's about the same. Uh, you know, too small puts a little too much tension on the uh, bearing, so we don't want that. So let's see what we got here. Here's my belt bag, and this has gotten away from me a little bit. Uh, I'd like to keep this a little more organized than what we have. I think you know, we got some small ones. I try to keep a lot of stuff on hand here, just makes life easier. Uh, this looks to be the bag that we're going to be the closest. So let's see here. That actually looks like it's going to work. It's a little bit narrower, but it's, you know, that's not a big issue. Oh, this might be a wider one. Let's see. Well, a too small. I think we'll go with this. You know, that's going to work. So, let's get this on. That'll solve, uh, you know, it's working fine the way it is, but you got to put everything back together 
at some point and then as soon as you do that that's when the belt's going to break probably so let's get this baby on i do like the fact that you can change a belt on this uh, without having to undo anything you know oftentimes there's some kind of a bracket or things are buried you've got to take things apart in order to get to the belt so that's looking good okay this video is kind of going off the rails a little bit because i'm just so excited about this thing to be honest with you that uh i forget to re hit record and um you know i just get lost in in the machine and kind of forget what's happening here so i'm gonna button it back up i'm adjusted to the point where i think we're all right we're lubricated i got a new belt on it and uh, we've cleaned up the tape heads. The tape I made for it isn't the best, uh, but we'll, you know, we can address that later. And uh, I'm going to put a little lemon oil on the wood and put her back together. And I think we're going to turn our attention to making a uh, plexiglass cover for the front here. It normally has one, didn't come with one. Uh, I've got some plexi that's about the same color, and uh, I'll cut that and uh, we'll get that on the front and see how it looks okay I just cleaned up those screws and uh, it's time to join this cabinet back up and I think I'll get you in for that because it's gonna be glorious isn't it uh, so now I think we were in the far left if I remember correctly Let's get that on here. And I probably should have got rid of this little uh, rotisserie here before I started, but let's just get that out of the way. And put that there. Probably forgetting something. It seems like I am, but I can't imagine what it would be right now. I put a little lemon oil on this. I'm not 100% sure it's real veneer, to be honest with you. So. It might have been better off with some armor all, but uh, we'll see how the lemon oil looks after a little while, and then if if it doesn't look great, we'll maybe try some armor all. Uh, seems to be the deal here. I guess that's it. Okay, uh, where's my screwdriver? Here it is. And let's throw this baby in. Again, I'm getting excited here. Typically, I would uh, put these screws in with uh, just by hand and not an electric driver, but I think we're all right here. We're, once we get them lined up, we're good. What do we have? Two on the bottom? Is that what we discovered? I'll go back and tighten those up once I get all of them in. Yeah, I forgot something. I would have liked to have cleaned up this back plate here while I had the machine apart because I don't want to be getting a wet rag around all this wood. So unfortunately, that's something I forgot. But we can go back and do that. I'm going to keep this probably the rest of my life. So we're going to have time. To deal with this anything we missed we can definitely uh, address at a later date oh look at it isn't it terrific hmm. okay uh, I've got this piece of plexiglass and I don't think I'm gonna do it tonight I've had kind of a busy day over here so uh, we need to kind of figure out our exact length and width of this and then uh, grab some fresh razor blades and I think I'll cut it with a razor blade and we'll get that thing made and then I'll have to find a couple of little screws they should be knurled thumb screws I think but we'll see what we can find 
Uh, might just be some shiny Phillips for now. Okay, I woke up this morning and said I'm going to just list things all day today. That's what I'm going to do is get things listed. And I got nothing listed. And I'm going back to this. All right, well, here's my uh, piece of plexiglass. And uh, it's very similar in the color uh, to the stuff that was on there originally. I've cut this end already, so I'm going to use this end, obviously, as my uh, new end. And then uh, I'm going to cut it this way first. And then I'll cut it to length, I think, is my my plan. I might, I might think about that, actually. Uh, I think we're going to stick with that. So, uh, let's see what we got here. It looks like we're about 120... 122? 121? Uh, we're gonna go with 121 I think I don't want it to be uh, too tight okay I've scored it quite a few times probably not enough but let's see if we have any luck here Okay, I'm going to score it a couple more. Uh, I don't like my half broken blade here, so let's snap that clean. And uh, tighten her up just a skosh. And let's work this a little bit more. Oh, terrible. wasn't much but let's see if it helped us I think we need a few more scores more scores and seven years ago here we go oh. come on baby oh. you know the score oh come on dirty Come on. Let's bring it up once. Oh, let's bring it down. There you go. Terrible. Oh. We got some random edge. What the hell happened? Oh. What the hell happened? How could it be? <laughs> We're good here and then we just go crazy. I don't understand. All right. Well, I'm going to score the other side, and then uh, I'm going to have to just nib off this piece, I guess. Maybe I'm going to sand it even. Okay, uh, I had to nib it a little bit, and uh, I'm just going to run down and clean up this edge. i got a couple of little spots on it. Okay, that's probably enough for the big wheel. Spinning wheel, got to go round. Uh, that's enough for the spinning wheel. I'm gonna go after it now with some real fine sandpaper, I think, once I get it. But let's cut it to the length next. Okay, uh, we have determined that 381 is our ideal length. So let's 
uh, get this thing lined up here about there and uh, 381 ish so let's try her again Three eighty-one. Let's measure from this end just to see if we're about the same. Here we are, sixty-seven, and sixty-eight. So we're a little bit off. Let's try her again some of the debris off the track here all right uh, one more time man it's like I've never measured anything before three sixty seventy eighty what's going on I turned it around Okay, 380. One is there. And 381 is there. All right, uh, we're getting a little too anal about this. Let's draw a line and let's cut this thing. All right. use it how it's supposed to be used all right right there takes a while then you start using things how they're supposed to be used pretty close all right <clears throat> so now what was the trip this all right 381 ish she's level and straight put her down okay let's see if we can do this without uh, having to do any nibbing so, let's cut it. Okay. <coughs> Go like that. Mm, like that. That is straight. She's tight. All right, let's bring her. One, two, I'm counting them, three, four, five, I just realized where I went wrong last time. Flip it over and do the other side. See if we can snap her. Oh, the old snapper. I think we got it. Okay, here comes the moment of truth. <clears throat> see if we're within reason son of a we're too long how did we do it oh my god 
Just terrible. We're okay this way, thank God. All right, we're too long. I'm gonna sand it a little bit. Okay, it's not ideal, but I did a couple of runs. And uh, looks like we're sitting good. Yep, I think we'll we'll go with those. So I just made a little black dot there where I wanted to be. Now I'll bring her over, and uh, I'm just going to drill these with a simple screwdriver. I think. I gotta get rid of this, this mat. And I think in order for me to see those dots, I'm gonna put a little paper down. This is kind of interesting. I got, I bought something a few months back, and inside of it, what, what was used for packing material was this crumpled up dot matrix printer paper, which I haven't seen dot matrix for a while. That was kind of brought back a lot of unpleasant memories of how shitty that paper is. Okay. Let's uh, get a little punch here, and uh, my little black dots are not that scientific, but put a pretty close to the center of that. That should work. Check out this hammer. Let me see what we're seeing here. Uh, I was walking in the woods, and there was a uh, I do some metal detecting out here, and there was a building that was falling down. I mean, it was abandoned out in the woods. And right inside the door were a few tools, uh, rusty tools in a box. So I grabbed this hammer, I brought it home, and wire wheeled it a little bit. And I couldn't believe my eyes. It was covered in rust when I got it. But somebody has carved a little dragon with a cloud and the sun. And there's little, I don't know if it's gold or if it's uh you know brazing rod or brass or what it is but the eyeballs have been touch of little gold on there look at that both sides are uh etched amazing i mean this thing could be literally could be hundreds of years old over here who knows you know most people aren't etching dragons into their hammer heads anymore Seems to have fallen out of favor. Okay, uh, I just had it. I had a drill. When I say drill, I mean a screwdriver. And uh, there it is. So we'll just pop this out. And uh, I'm gonna say, uh, we're gonna go a little bit bigger than that. I'm gonna just walk over real quick with my drills and look at how big that hole is. All right, this is more than enough. So, put this in, and uh, we'll start that by hand. Probably could just do it by hand, but we'll give it a little. All right, and we'll hit this one right in the center. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, pop this out and I'll uh, run this little one through the center so that I've got a hole on the other side. And then I'll flip it over and use that big one. That way, hopefully, I've got kind of a camfered uh, edge on both sides. pretty good all right those will work I haven't got any screws yet so I'm gonna find some screws okay I went down to my local electronics store today hoping to find some of those little knurled um, you know thumb screws but I didn't have any luck so let's see what we've got here and try to find a pair 
and uh, these two are identical I'll see if they fit this is what we've got they're kind of a big head on them which uh, looks good here's what I came up with for screws they're not ideal you know they, the reason they chose a knurled thumb screw is you really need to be able to hold it to put it in there so it's not real easy to install but what I'm gonna do is just line this up and I've got one screw hopefully it stays on there oh it didn't uh, I had a screw on my screwdriver let's see if I can do it with my fingers it's not easy because there's just nothing to grab here all right carefully All right, we got one. Let's get this and we'll just stick it on the driver. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, that's what we got. <clears throat> and uh, I'm okay with that. As long as the customer's happy, and I'm the customer in this situation, yeah, I'm happy. So, that's going to work. Not too bad. It's got about the right color to it. And, uh, you know, it's going to keep the dust out of there primarily. That's the, the goal of it. So I think we're looking pretty good. Okay, people, you've reached the end, and uh, it was a long one, and I doubt anybody's going to ever hear this sign-off, but if you did stick it out, uh, I commend you. And uh, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed a look inside of a hawk. I planned all along to keep this thing, and I was just going to make this video to show people that might be interested what the insides of one of these look like and the process I went through to, to clean this thing up. But unbelievably, I found another one, and uh, obviously I've done the same to that one. And I'm going to keep the other one, the 2150. This is a 2150A. Uh, so this is up for sale on Reverb now. I do demo this on another video that will be linked at the end here. So if you want to see a demo of it, you can check it out. So uh, thanks for stopping by. And check out Vintage Audio Nagoya for a lot more uh, demos and clips, etc. Thanks.